Hello guys, welcome to the video. This is for patch 2.5.0 guys. The patch is now live across the whole goddamn world. I'm going to add some really cool new interesting stuff to Diablo 3. So let's get straight into it guys. As we all know now, oh well most of us know, um, the guys, the armory feature is now in the game. So basically now you can now save up to five different builds per character using the armory. Uh, this new feature can be found in the town hub within each act. So basically, there's a new uh, little clickable way, so you don't like a little armory camera. You click on that, and basically, you can save tons of loads out, and it will make you swap all the gear back and forth between yourself and your stash, sort of thing. So, and all your skills will be updated as well. I'll probably do a little video just quickly showing out how it works. It's pretty simple. But uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. So, like it says here, uh, saving a build in the armory will snapshot your current character's gear, socket and gems, active and passive skills, and K9 IQ powers as well. Equipping a saved armory build will automatically swap items and gear between the character and the stash. So like, just like I said, man, it just swaps it directly between. So make sure you have a dedicated spot if you got it in your stash. Love it. Okay, guys, so this is a feature that I've been wanting for a long, long time, which is basically crafting map storage. Uh, starting with the patch 2.5, crafting materials picked up or attained through salvaging will now appear in a separate storage tab, freeing up stash in the shared uh, stash. This tab can be accessed through the inventory window. Okay, so uh, basically you get this little hammer icon there in your inventory window, you click on that, all your materials in there are now adjusting there. All your Veil Crystal, your Blues, your Whites, all that sort of stuff, your uh, Bounty Mats in there, your Souls, your DBs, all that sort of stuff is in there. There. At the moment, though, gems and uh, keystones are not in there, which is kind of annoying because I have an absolutely enormous amount of gems and they take a lot of my stash. So, blessed guys, if you are watching this video, could you please one day put gems and GR keystones into the uh, accumulated stash as well for the crafting of some stash storage because it'd just be a bit easier. And uh, especially on non seasons, man, I've got literally. Coming up to 2,000 GR keys, and so uh, I've got no real space to put them. I've all my other loot there, so maybe put that in. Okay, guys, uh, a few class changes, man. Crusader, Shield Glare, the Divine Verdict rune has been updated to apply its secondary effect, even if the target is immune to crowd control effects. Barbarian Seismic Slam, uh, the Rumble rune will now consume all remaining fury to increase the rune's damage over time, component by 15% weapon damage per point of fury spent. Uh, Demon Hunter guys, Empower, Ricochet, uh, fix a bug where the second bounce granted by this rune would sometimes fail if enemies were packed tightly together, so that's been fixed. Fantastic. Okay guys, this is a major thing that's coming to the game, which has basically brought back Diablo's loot hunt once again. So uh, we finally uh, got something to hunt down, which is fantastic, because uh, you know we've been spooked fed entries for a long, long time, so now there's actually that rare chance to find a really cool item. Let's read this out. Uh, primal Ancient Items, Deliver Developers uh, Philosophy. Okay, this is what they put in. Primal Ancients are for players who have largely completed gearing for their build and finished their seasonal journey, but want to continue playing. They're also for non-seasonal players who have great gear and spend most of their time gaining Paragon levels and upgrading legendary gems. Uh, we want to extend the excitement of seeing the gear drop or spending Blood Shards at Kadala past the point of getting Ancients in every slot. Primals provide an avenue for dedicated players to complete a build without feeling like a required upgrades. Which is pretty cool, man. So, um, there's a bit more here. Uh, legendary and set items will have a chance to roll as Primal Ancient. These items are much, much more rare than Ancient items. I think it's something like 1 in 100 will be each Primal Ancient. They're extremely rare. Extremely rare. I think it's like 1%, so that's like, crazy. Uh, and have perfect ancient level stats on all affixes, including the item's legendary power, which is awesome, man. Uh, guys, you can only unlock these once you do basically do GR70. There it is, man. That's the requirement. You've got to do at least GR70 solo. Alright? It doesn't it might sound like a, a bit a little bit of a big milestone, but honestly, it's not anymore because of the set bonuses you get from set gear is so powerful. GR70 is nothing now, you know what I mean? Even as a new player, that really is nothing. Just follow some guides on Diablo fans, and you'll be in GR70 within a day of a season, man. It's crazy. Uh, guys, uh, these are separate unlocks between normal and hardcore characters, as well as the seasonal and non-seasonal characters. Uh, guys, please note, man, with uh, Primal Agents as well, they can still roll the wrong stats. For instance, say you had a Sacred Harvest drop that rolled Primal, it could still roll in Vit cooldown reduction. It might not roll the meta sort of thing, man. So, but yeah, be careful, man. Be careful. <laughs> By the way, you can still blood them up for 15 souls if they, they do roll, uh, roll shit. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, uh, Prime Agents are 15 souls. Uh, standard Agents are now worth three Forgotten Souls. Personally, I think this should have been five. 
free is not really that much, but you know, I mean, especially with that re bounty rerolling really shit. Okay, guys, uh, legendary items have been changed. Uh, Rhyme Heart. Uh, increase the chance to proc its legendary item power on frozen targets from 10% to 20%. That is nice, but the problem with Reinhardt is its massive internal cooldown. That is the problem with Reinhardt. You need to change its internal cooldown, Blitz, to make this more viable. But thank you for the change there. Strong Arm Braces, guys. A nice little change here. The damage bonus from this item is now applied on the knockback occurs rather than when the enemy lands. And the damage duration bonus has been increased to 6 seconds. That's a good, uh, that's nice actually, because uh, this is used in the. Uh, in a few builds now for meta, so this is a good change. Excellent. Okay, guys, Crusader change, man. Four set bonus for Roland's Legacy. The damage bonus is increased to 2.5k from 1250, and damage bonus is Sweep Attack and Shield Bash as well. Um, this is a nice change, but it doesn't make Roland's Legacy the top solo build for uh, Crusader because it's still uh, the Hamidin build, basically. So it's a nice change, but it's still not the top Geo solo build. Uh, Monk in his favor, 6 set bonus, uh, damage bonus for each mystic ally has been increased to 125 or 100%, nice little buff there, not too bad. As you would, or guys, you know me, uh, I play Wish Dots uh, as my main, and I've done for many, many years. Uh, Zuni Master Horn, 6 piece bonus, damage bonus has been increased to 2.5k from 1500%, where enemies are hit by your mana spenders for 8 seconds. Okay, so um, this is a nice buff. And it looks like um, Zuni Master might be used as a Rift Guardian killer in four player meta as well, actually. So there's been some uh, posts there on uh, Reddit and stuff, so it seems quite interesting. Maybe a Carnival build might be a Rift Guardian killer build now for Zuni Master in four man. But in a solo uh, point of view, uh, this build is not top. It is not top, sadly. But it is, does start off as a very, very nice start set for us. A very nice start set. So um, when the new season kicks off in about just over a week's time, about a week's time, um, Zuni Garg basically will be a fantastic uh, start build for us, which I've got a video coming in very, very soon. Start build for us. So, yeah, it's, it's not top, but Arakia Firebass solo is still top. It's still top for us. Which is a shame, man, because I want to see Zuni Master better, man. We need to see Fetish DPS good again. Blizzard, please. You know what I mean? There's so many legendaries that could make Fetish DPS viable now. You know what I mean? Star Metal Kukri, Battle Transcendence. It's been a long time since Fetishes have been real damage. It's always been Gargs these days. Maybe think about it. So a few changes, guys. And uh, the uh, the way Zuni Master procs as well is awful. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but it is bad. Maybe change that to when you summon Fetish Army or something. It does the bonus for X seconds or something because hitting a mana spender right now is painful. Very, very painful. Uh, Wizard does uh, make an Opus two set bonus. Uh, cooldown of time, so time is reduced by three seconds to two. And when casting Arcane Orb, Energy Twister, Explosive Blast, Magic Missile, Shock Bolts, Special Blade, and Weave of Force. Four set bonus. Um, damage reduction is increased to 60% from 50%. A little buff there. And six set bonus, guys, is now gone to 3.5k from 2.5k. One size slow time. And the slow time we don't persist for five seconds after it's the slow time. A nice buff, but it's still not top for Wizard. It's not a top solo build for Wizard, but it's nice to see that it's been updated a little bit there. Okay, guys, some existing class certificate legendaries have been updated to include a new legendary power. Existing items will not be affected, so basically you need to basically you need to refarm the item again, okay? And that is for the holy point shot for the demon hunter. Which is a really nice item now, and this is this is item is making the Demon Hunter very, very strong now in solo and four man groups, surprisingly. Um, in Prowl now throws two additional knives. Very, very cool. Okay, uh, function of this, some of the items have changed, guys, for the Barber. I've tested the Barber a lot on the PTR, and I'm sad to report it's still not that good. It's roughly a GR80 build right now, using Lon. <laughs> so uh, it needs a big buff. It needs a big buff still. A hell of a lot, you know what I mean? So, uh, we'll see what happens with this in the future. Hopefully Blizzard makes it a bit stronger. Pretty much all they've got to do is make the damage, explosion damage bonus just larger. Or maybe add it so, um... Maybe make it so Spirit Barrage is a part of the Jade set. You know, it's a Spirit set anyway. Kind of makes sense to put Spirit Barrage damage in there, Blizzard, maybe. Maybe work the Barber into the Jade set. Because, like I said, it's, it's a Spirit set anyway. So, you know, make it at home and you get that damage bonus it really needs. And maybe yeah, make some nice scene changes to the build, maybe. But, uh, yeah, this weapon is now a ceremonial knife instead of a dagger. So, basically, it now rolls the uh, much bigger damage bonus. Uh, that's rolls the damage of Wish Dutter items. The damage bonus to the first bonus is items legendary powers also be reintroduced. So, it basically, gets that 250 bonus, which is nowhere near enough. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Extracted. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so, guys, there has been a nerf to the Manard Heal Ring. Okay. Wizards right now are insane. They're absolutely insane. In solo and GR, four mans, they're absolutely insane. They're so strong. 
and I'm kind of surprised that they need a nerf for this patch. So, uh, yeah, fucking amazing. Uh, wizard pets such as Hydras now proc the damage component on the Menard Heal Ring when attacking a target. Uh, the number of procs generated by this chain of skills while using this item has been reduced by 25%. Even with this the nerf by 25%, the Menard Heal Ring and the Lightning Hydra builds are absolutely insane. They're so strong. And Wizards right now, four player groups, uh, I, think, I believe are the meta. They can kill Rift Guardians so quick. And I mean so quick, even with this nerf. So uh, yeah, Wizards man is coming to the four man scores. Lovely. Loot Dream Boots uh, now allows a player to pass through enemies of the Walder effects when using Furious Charge, Whirlwind, Strafe, and Tempest Rush. Cool. That'd be a nice change for the Whirlwind Barbs, actually. Cool. Uh, folk bug fixes. Uh, Legacy of Rare Core. Fix a bug where the six piece bonus of this set would not buff the earthquake damage. Really? The fuck? I didn't even know that was a bug. <laughs> Monsters! Uh, fix an issue causing elite enemies with the Juggernaut effects to incorrectly take uh, normal damage from slow time combined with Desert Magnum Opus. Hmm, interesting. Okay, guys, a little change here for uh, public stuff. Um, the requirements for participating in certain difficult levels in public games has been changed from current Paragon level to high solo greater rift clear as follows. And they basically got these here. So um, if, if someone in a public game wants to join Atomic 13 game, they must have at least GR60 cleared. So basically, it stops a lot of frustration. You know, when you play public, sometimes you go into a game and you're doing Torment 13 and there's loads of players in there who can't do Torment 13 whatsoever and they get absolutely wrecked and die all the time. It's very frustrating and it leads to people. It's caused a lot of sortiness, man, and everyone just leaves sort of thing. So uh, this is a good change. This makes public uh, games, man. You know, you know you're grouping with someone who's done at least a GR60 solo, okay? So you know they can actually do that level. It's a good change. It's a good change. Uh, guys, this change is only on PC and Mac, not on a console. Okay, guys, uh, several quality of life changes have been made. The frequency of tile sets in Greater Rifts has been adjusted. Okay, so we're on the last patch, 2.4, 2.4.3. Um, basically, caves, keep depths, and Zotal Cool's archives will now appear less often. These were spawning a lot, and I mean a lot. Especially that fucking cave map, man, that drove me crazy. But Stinging Winds, Festering Woods, Pandemonium, Tristram Cathedral, Eric Crater, and Realm of the Badge will appear more often. Especially, guys, Festering Woods. This map, if you get this map with the right mobs, you know, you're looking at it clear most of the time. So this will now spawn more often. Good change. Thank you very much, man. Okay, uh, the flooded causeway and Westmarsh locations will no longer appear on the first floor of Greater Rifts. Good. <laughs> the number of spear-throwing goatmen and skeleton archers that appear in Greater Rifts have been reduced in certain enemy populations. Now, the last patch was really naughty, actually, especially for you guys that are playing hardcore, because you go to a GR... And there'll be a shitload of goat men, like 15, 20 of them, and they just go, rah! And they throw their spears and you're insta killed. And it's like, what the fuck, man? So thankfully, Blizzard changed that. <laughs> Thank you, Blizzard. Oh my god. Okay, guys, a shitload of set dungeon changes as well. Unhallowed Essence, the upper right tile for this dungeon has been replaced with one that affords more space for monster spawning as a quality of life improvement. Armor of Akkad, uh, the number of times Condemn must hit 10 or more enemies to complete the objective has reduced from 10, 12 to 10, so it's slightly easier now. Uh, Dale Dale is making an opiate set dungeon. Uh, the required number of enemies players must be hit must hit at once with slow time is reduced from 30 to 20. That's much easier now. And the number of times they must be hit means increased from 3 to 4, so that's a bit better there. A Yoli Stratagem. The minimum number of enemies players need to hit with a single exploding palm for the first bonus objection has been lowered from 21 to 15, so much, much easier now. And the number of times it must be performed has been changed from 3 to 4. So you've got to do it one more time, but it's a lot easier to get. It'd be, it's just easier, man. Oh, guys, this change here. Oh, my God, this change here. Oh, my God, thank God, Blizzy, you put this in. Bounties, guys. Bounty acts have been removed. Oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, thank God. Uh, with this change, completing five bounties in any act will now grant you a large horrific chest. Gives you a big fucking gold one. Looks cool as fuck. Uh, containing some, the same contents as a horrific and bonus cases. Now, basically, what used to happen is we used to do bounties. Then someone would misclick on Tyrael in one of the acts and you would lose all the mats. You'd lose half the mats that you found for. And uh, it's very frustrating. Guys, that is now gone. Now you can do any bonus act, any sorry, any act you want, and claim the loot whenever you want. Basically, you don't have to worry about losing mats and shit. Good change, Blizzard. Thank you. Brilliant. 
Uh, bug fix. Uh, fix an issue that caused a specific enemy population of Turian cultists in Great Rift to spawn in the wrong ratio of minions. Really? That's interesting, actually, because cultists are one of the best mobs for a GR pushing right there. Nice. Hey, guys, uh, quality of life. Thank fucking God they put this in. Paragon system. You can now spend 100 Paragon points by holding the control key, the control key and left clicking. Thank God, because at the moment you can do it in 1s and 10s. And right now, many patch guys, you can do 100 power points per click there. <laughs> much, much quicker. And there you go, guys. I see all the patch notes. I'll put a link to the description to these official patch notes in the description of this video, guys. And there you go, man. That's the end of the video. Once again, thank you guys all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. I'll see you in the next one. Have fun in Sanctuary, guys. I'll see you in patch 2.5. Take care.